Hi everybody, welcome to Witness Maminis. I'm Peter and today we wipe. Ever since I started in the hobby, I heard rumblings about one book that every mini painter should have. Painting miniature from A to Z and Gerard the Masterclass, Volume 1. No, not that one, Angel. Supposedly, it would be the only book you ever needed for miniature painting. Uh, uh, supposedly, it would be the only book besides Figopedia that you would need in our hobby. I am, of course, talking about... To set Damn it, Angel, no! Get out of here! Color and Light by James Gurney. Let me start by saying that this book isn't for miniature painters per se. This is the end all of all art books. And it's a great place to find inspirations for all artists of all mediums. But, 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 there are simple lessons in here too that we can try out on our minis. And one of those things is what I'll be toting today. We will try this out on a mini that I got sent by one of my patrons. He knows my soft spot for big swords and he sent me this mini. So I will be painting up in this style and I will be sending it back to him. So here we go. So we all got a color wheel, I guess. Probably the exact same one too. And what we learned early in miniature painting is that it's all about contrast. Please, kind sir, could you spare some feedback on my paint job? Contrast is needed here. Contrast between values and colors and contrast between good and bad. Could you give me some CC? What the hell is CC? Constructive criticism, bitch. And CC, sprinkle on a pink job. Dude, you have to up the contrast, dude. So how do we achieve contrast? By working with dark and light values, as well as opposite colors of the color wheel, right? Color scheme on a mini, it's easy, man. You should just use a uh, triad or something. Or you could just use a contrasting color, you know, the opposite side of the wheel, man. You got it, dude. Do it, dude. Nothing to it, dude. When doing it this way, what is often forgotten is to get the piece harmonious. So ever since I read about this, I really wanted to try it. I feel that it lends itself to the way that I do want to paint. I want my minis to be set in an environment. I don't want them to be paint by numbers, if you know what I mean. So let's talk about the three aspects of colors. There is hue. Where does the hue place itself on the color wheel? Then there's value, how light and how dark is the color. And then there is saturation. How pure is the color? To lower the saturation of colors, you simply mix in gray. So with that in mind, I will now choose a color gamut and I will stick to it. It's all about finding the right mood for the paint job. And what a gamut does is that it boxes me in, it excludes all of the other colors outside of the gamut that I won't be using to make sure that I get a coherent mood across the whole mini. I found this website where you can print and make your own gamuts. The link is down in the description. And while you're down there, please like, subscribe and comment. It really helps more than you think. Here are the shapes that are recommended that you start with, but there's also a blank sheet so you can come up with your own color gamut when you feel ready for that. After looking through my options, I decided to go with this gamut. With this gamut, I get a bunch of desaturated colors as well as one pop color that is very highly saturated. I feel this will lend itself to a very interesting mood. And as it happens, I just got a Kickstarter delivered from Chimera. And one of these sets is basically perfect for my chosen color scheme. I start by spraying the mini with two different greens from above, one from the right and one from the left, the left one covering most of the mini. I then go in with my pop color, my bright and very saturated magenta, and I map out my oversell. Last but not least, I spray with a very dark uh, shadow color from beneath to unify the shadows across the whole mini. After that, I move to the brush. I place all of the colors on my palette as well as black and white. I mix a gray in the middle so I can desaturate colors as I go. And then the back and forth begins of the paint job and this is really hard to describe. The first thing I do is mix a wash from my shadow color and go over the whole mini. I find this easiest to show the painting process on the hair because there we have highs and lows and very deep crevices. 
So what I basically do after the wash has dried is that I go in with a slightly thicker glaze consistency. I also don't cover all the hair because I want the ambience of the pre-existing color work to remain. I try to mix it up in hue as well when doing value jumps just to get a better feel and more contrast this way. I'm still learning this style and I did recently try it out on a bust. So if you want to take a look at that, it should be in the corner right now. The only difference in painting the armor is that I go even brighter in value. I still leave a lot of the underlying layers as is for now. The only thing that's really important here is to make those sudden value jumps to sell the effect. And when painting the cape, I really want to make it rough to be fitting the warrior that she is. So I go in with the same colors really, but with the stippling effect with sponges. I stipple the tones on and wet blend them on the spot. Still, of course, following the light map that the airbrush has given me. When painting the blade, it's pretty much the same as painting the armor. I do, however, go in with different colors that I see in the area surrounding the blade that I want to be caught in the reflection. In this way, it gets even more of a focal point And when all is said and done, this is the only place where I use a pure white. To finish up the OSL, I go in with a white heavy body acrylic and I pick up the spots on the mini that I want the light to catch, as well as the light source. I then spray the same magenta color, slightly thinner this time, to make sure that it seems brighter. When that is said and done, I go in again with the same white heavy body acrylic and I brighten up the light source. And then I go in with the airbrush yet again, but this time with a fluorescent pink color from Scale 75. Unfortunately, the last part of the painting process was lost because of a full memory card. Why? So I will try to explain it instead. So this was my palette after all the brushwork. I left it overnight and when coming back to it, I basically have the perfect diluted glazes for the airbrush. So you scoop them up with a big brush, I put them in the cup and I carefully, with low bar setting, carefully blend the harshness of the transitions and then of course also add one or two bright white highlights on that blade.
So there you have her. I hope you like her, Simon, and that she does well in a future game and don't die right away. You never know in KDM, right? Thanks for watching. And if you want to support this channel, I have a Patreon. The link is in the description below. Nothing is, of course, necessary. It's always very, very much appreciated. At the very least, please come and hang out in our Discord channel. The link is also in the description. Bye, guys. Please give me some feedback on my paint job. Dude! How about upping the contrast? <laughs>